I'm not too worried about OG's damage. They do. No, the other way around. Oh, the other way around. Uh, Puck takes care of that. Like Enigma lacks a little bit of damage until he gets the items. Dawnbreaker. Uh, Dawnbreaker does damage. Like it's having this global presence as well, and it's like kind of guaranteed ulti where you're gonna land when you have a black hole and Puck. Even shards from Tusk is gonna be enough for Dawnbreaker ulti to kick in. Okay, so going a, with the bristle back. So it's mid tiny. The support duo of Viper Zeus. The year is 2022. I think yeah. I think for for OG, it's just going to be this. You play your lanes. You're super annoying in them. And once you get to a couple items, Yuragi is going to lead the charge. You get a pick off outside Roshan. You get that Aegis, uh, and you just try and punish Nigma. The reason why Nigma's had a low win rate so far uh, since the major is teams are being way more aggressive hey, against it hey, they're not allowing this hero hey. to find time so yeah it's a lot of fight from og seconds, but if really? gladiators get their correct lanes and get to stall out the game once again where they have Five ace farming by remaining. himself they're fighting with the other three heroes and what's the correct laning setup i mean there's always possibility that uh, we mentioned that this enigma can go to safe lane yeah. and uh, you have an aggressive trial in with the enchantress plus a tusk you get the value from the tag team a lot more one of the like better heroes to have in a trial and usually like tusks don't get it early on mm -hmm. um, since like this patch and the previous one you go mostly for the shards and the snowball instead but in this lane you should probably get it if this is a trial lane yeah and uh, this is five Zeus for Viper this time yeah. around. There was one game where OG already ran position four Viper, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if this was this tour or the previous Probably one. I think previous. But yeah, previous. Uh, I I like what the OG's got. I think this um, this bristleback uh, can easily pop off. It gives them this momentum. Roche taking potential synergizes nicely with Slardar as well. Like the damage from Quells is gonna be through the roof. It's just annoying. Like you look at OG tiers, you're like. Ah. Ugh. Like if this was a pub, like what am I playing? They also again? have yeah. no no cooldowns whatsoever, yeah. and uh, I think that's what's gonna be punished because yeah. uh, gaming gladiators they have two or three. Okay, well let's find out what's gonna happen in the first game of this best of three series. We're heading out over to Odpixel Fund. Thank you very much, even yes, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for. OG versus GG. I'm Adi Pixel here with Fog. We've just had the lineups come in. Fog, what's uh, what's sort of standing out to, to you oh here? I mean, we're, we're seeing some God. exciting I'm stuff. I feel uh, well, from OG, it's uh, you know, if you go, you know, look at other games, it's kind of like a five core lineup. Yeah, it is. It's a very fast pace strapped with like no cooldowns versus a lineup that does have a little bit more cooldown reliance, right? The Puck, yep. the Enigma, the Dawnbreaker does feel like they could be a little bit slower at some times, and it feels like OG is just about brawl, 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 which I mean does seem like a good plan for the way that they play the usually. However, it does feel like they could take uh, maybe a time where after laning phase, they might need to wait a little bit in order to get the blinks online, in particular onto the tiny, so that they can actually have setup because they do have a Zeus and Viper support. So that can sometimes make it a little bit awkward depending on how the lanes go. And important to say, yeah, let's see how these lanes will go. How is Gaming Glider is going to position their lanes? Because as we've seen doing? them do, it's a bit of a... Strange. Look how he walks. Why is he walking? He has the tree, right? Oh, is he just invisible? It is invisible. An invisible tree? Oh, wait. It, yeah, it's invisible yeah. on my screen, too. too oh. The tech. The okay, rare noted. invisible tree. I wonder if it's something with the set or maybe it's just the, how the game's loaded. But... It's got to be the frost moot tree, right? Do you think it's something to do with the set? I like this set, too. This, oh, is, my, like this, this. is my like, favorite tiny set. A little Christmas. Oh, Good one. Any watch. other fun sets, actually? We got a new we got a new chest set. Anyone anyone rocking anything? We got the not... No, Tiger doesn't have the fat viper. He's fat. Like, he's, oh, the new viper. He, he has a one. big belly. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's new funny. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's I mean, and also, what, what, why do you think um, OG in their draft decided, you know, that they did want to just put the Vipers to support and, and get a Mar on the Slardar this game? Because you know, we're not seeing a lot of Slardar, and uh, and obviously Mar very, very strong on the Viper offlane. So why, why do you think the change up there to, to try and get a Slardar in this game? He probably likes the matchup if he sees that it's going to be a Dawnbreaker carry. Yep. They probably knew immediately that that's going to be Duraccio playing it. So playing Slardar versus most melee carries can be quite nice. And versus, like, versus Dawnbreaker, you have two different ways to cancel the Starbreaker in lane. Right, if you can prime your bash or you just use a Slytherin crush, you can have a decent chance of it. Yeah, let's. I, I'm. Okay, I'm curious to see how the lanes are going to be set up because. <laughs> this is so fun, is it, is it's, it, a it's gotta be the set. Is this going to stay like this the whole game? Well, because I, like Loki, okay. that's actually kind of bad, isn't it? I mean, how are you supposed to see these trees that he's throwing at you? Well, let's see if the tree throw sure. is revealed. Yeah. But, I mean, that does look quite goofy. Yeah. That. <laughs> and musical lanes. Yeah. All right. Okay, you at least still see it when it's thrown. Okay. Otherwise, that would have actually been pretty bad. 
So as we expected, yeah. you know, musical lanes. This is all what Gaming Gladiators is about. They love to get the proper lane set up. So you see Dawnbreaker is trying to dodge the Viper Slaughter. That is a disgusting lane, gotta be honest. Covers all bases, Viper Slaughter is all, like, one is all magic damage, one's all physical too, so... They're gonna try to put the Enigma down there to take the brunt of the pressure. Uh, and have you sort of been liking this this carry Dawnbreaker that yeah. we've seen, of course, GG try before, and, you know, just the hero in this position? You think it's got potential? Yeah, I like it a lot, actually. This this mid and this uh, yep. carried position, it feels really cool. The items that you're able to get, and just the buff, of course, in Luminosity, it's crazy. Like, you hit 15, you have max Luminosity, and you are... It's better than Junk Crit, in a way. Like, it actually is an absurd amount of damage. Gonna get aggressive onto your Argy here. It's gonna be good damage with the impetus as well. Argy looking pretty dead. Uh, it's a lot of quill spray stacks though. But, uh, with the three of them surrounding him, and one final impetus hit for salary. It will indeed be first blood for gaming gladiators. And we do get that aggro tri lane, but oh my goodness, mid lane. Yes, the solo. We gotta get that up on the replay. That BZM getting a solo mid. It'd be a little disappointed, of course, it didn't happen sooner and get the first bud, but still overall, getting a first bud, Tiny versus... Well, sorry, a solo kill, Tiny versus Park. Uh, he's going to be uh, happy with that one, BZM. It's incredible what it sets up for the whole entire game, pretty much, actually. Once you get a level advantage as a Tiny versus Park, like, you can always get these solo kills. as Misha... He'll go down. The aggro tri lane. Panel mentioned it's a high possibility. We kind of expected it, Oh, let's it check too. this out here. Uh, okay, this is going to be... A oh, yeah, just in with the toss. And the final punch. Just not right. able to get far enough away there, boom. Pushing the limits with the skill build. Going for the full aggression rather than having phase shift. All right. I mean, that is a very good start, of course, for OG. And now they're even bringing the tri lane to battle. They're going to send the Viper top oh my to God. deal with this dawn. I'll tell you what, in the mid again, Boom nearly died a second time there. He was one hit away once more. He's able to, to heal himself up with the bottle charges. Uh, but BZM is very much getting these opportunities to really threaten Boom's life in the mid match. I think he should queue up the raindrop pretty soon. I think, yeah, he already has, so. Probably gonna buy that right away when he can versus this obnoxious tiny. But yeah, amazing start already. The tiny and the slaughter having free farm. Bristleback slightly shut down, but he is in the tri lane versus tri lane, so. I have the game and glad just forced the tri lane all the time. I mean, they look to fight top. They're gonna try and go for Yuragi. They're in with the snowball, Yuragi. Oh. He's gonna let. Oh. Actually, he ends up going down. Celery was able to get in with that last hit to take him out. They will Tiger. lose. Oh, for in return. He's got mana. Celery, one more hit. I mean, Dratch is gonna try to... Dratch might be able to get Misha. He's gonna run down the Zeus, but... Nope. Yeah, he has to hold back. Tiger's gonna start stacking up the poison on him. Oh, Viper is so disgusting. <laughs> He's actually gonna... I think he might die. One more. They're out of mana, right? Oh, one more. Is that enough? He's kept it, kept it up at fifth stacks. Oh, it's really close. He's okay. Guys. All right, let's just look at top lane. This is the fun lane. Ah, so much happening up there. But just as painful, it's actually probably maybe even worse that he didn't die. He's now sat at 80 HP versus the Bristle and the Viper. Yeah, that is, that's going to feel bad. We'll struggle to farm. All right, I mean, this is a very heavy battle battle lane. Tusk, as they said, the kind of king of tri lanes. But Viper, I feel like, is also one of those king of tri lanes that trades with pretty much anybody very effectively. Yeah, he has no tree, so it's just gonna be a whole thing, by the way. It's gonna be for the whole game. The tree's not showing. Well, it, it might change when he levels up, right, the ult. You know, that... Maybe. Oh, you don't think so? You think if the tree's not fair now, it's not fair now? Because to be fair, the tree itself doesn't change when you level, does it? It's the no. same cosmetic. It's probably just not gonna be there. So, I mean, so, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> is what it is. It is what... As, 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 it is a good job we can see it when he's throwing it. Because if you did, if it was an invisible tree being thrown at you, that's actually kind of game-breaking. <laughs> Oh. Top lane, another kill here for the aggression of gaming gladiators. Nice wild wing play. This a free farm slaughter though. This is gonna be setting up a really good game for Amar to have a very good timing. As we know, he likes to play very greedy on his slaughter, so he instantly has the Mask of Madness already queued up. He kind of wants to be the carry himself. Where are you going? Uh, let's see how much they can get out of top of tag team. And Tiger's trying to trade with Celery, but Tofu and Dracho, they just tr oh, jump straight over onto the Viper. Exactly how you got to deal with the, the Vipers, right? Just get in the face of them. Uh, and of course, with this tri and gaming gladiators, they've very much got the damage to, to blow up the Viper at this stage. Anybody, really. Yep. Anyone who steps up out of position, they have to be very careful. And they have to save, it feels like they have to save Lightning Bolt for the Starbreaker every time. Misha has to be very careful how he does use it. Otherwise, it's a free setup every time Duraccio just walks up and gets it on them. Tag Team Starbreaker is no joke. No joke at all. Ace will also have free farm though, so even though there is a Slardar free farming, of course that Enigma is going to have a really good early start to go for that Vlad switch it does seem to be. 
Misha. And it's going to be fine. Of course, we'll always have that heavenly jump. Let's check in the ruins. Boom. It's going to be a nice one. A DD. It's a big one. Get some action with this. He'll head over, grab the bounty as well. He's checking for stacks as well, too. Oh, Misha. Misha. Heavenly jump is on cooldown. No escape. <laughs> and another kill for this top lane there. You can see already what Duraccio is. I'm not getting the kills out of this. You know, this ended up going the way of the support, but five assists. They're getting a lot of action out of this top lane. They'll have six really early. Like, they're going to have to watch out for the global threat. He's going to pretty much have it. That's a tri lane with almost a level six Dawnbreak. I mean, that's yeah. pretty ridiculous. They are kind of leaving the lane and giving him a lot of the experience, but still, that might catch OG off guard. And Celery. Oh, they're in with a lightning bolt. And Tofu's moved down to the bottom. They're maybe going to try and see if they can catch him up by surprise. I mean, Tofu is dominating this game right now. This Tusk pick is really working out for the early game. This looks a bit deep, maybe. See how much they want to commit here. They do have Black Hole. And BZM is going to come in with the counter play. TP's in. So to go over towards Tofu. Three still not quite enough. They're going to drop the Black Hole and they're ready to turn it. They're coming in with the Soul of Guardian. There's the follow from Duraccio. Boom, turning up to make sure they can get the kills out of this one. BZM will go down. Boom was able to catch on the edge of it. You know, the stream caught onto a Mar. So Mar, he'll be chased out. Good reactions from gaming gladiators. <laughs> They're so, their early game is always so damn good. I know T was mentioning it on the panel. They're so good about making these quick early rotations. And you can see that OG, like, especially when Mar was hesitant because he said, oh god, the threat of Black Hole is there. Yeah. He tries to walk in, boom, Black Hole catches one, and then the quick follow up, boom, and they even get a tower now. So an excellent pace being set from gaming gladiators with that global threat. I just, I'm so surprised how fast this Dawnbreaker hit level six. But I think the biggest highlight really is, as Amar pointed out, Tofu on his tusk. Like, he really is crushing this early game. Under attack. Three points in the tag team. Something you don't see too often anymore. A lot of times we are seeing it switched up. More points being put into the ice shards. Of course, Celery. You know he does have the five kills, but you know the tusk is the one that's enabling Radiant's a lot of these big jumps attack. forwards. And when this sort of you know early game action is coming at you, if you're OG, well, what's sort of the game plan for them here? It, it, they have to just kind of farm. Until the yeah. Tiny feels like he can always get involved, they have to farm because Bristleback will shut down the laning phase, so... I think they do just have to kind of chill out a little bit. Because there is just an overwhelming amount of damage with this Tusk and with this Dawnbreaker being so high level. I just don't, I'm so surprised. Level 7 Dawnbreaker in an aggro tri lane. That is just incredibly impressive. And as we mentioned, you know, it's it's tough to make these aggressive moves on OG because they have Viper and Zeus as their two support, so it's really reliant on the Core's game in order to make anything as Taiga. He's looking pretty dead here. Another one. He's gonna have Misha TP in over. Misha <laughs> might be in trouble himself too, unless the core rotates. I mean Yuragi's trying to step up to this, but again, Game of Gladiators have got the numbers. So uh, not much that can be done to save Misha. Misha goes down and Yuragi. He's not got a huge amount of mana to play with. I mean BZM's watching from the side. Game of Gladiators is bringing more numbers. Tofu and Boomer here. They just gonna run it from the side and merge even the start of into the start of the guy. He's gonna be able to catch BZM. He's turned with the avalanche. But trying to escape this, but Gaming Gladiators, they're more than happy to just constantly bring this brawling action. And OG's lineup, they're just not at a stage where they can deal with this. No. Tiny having a bit of a rough one, even though he got the first kill in the mid lane, or second kill, I guess, in the mid lane. He's still having a tough time showing up. They're just doing a great job of showing up with these cooldowns. Mar also. I mean, just don't stop it from gaming gladiators. 12 to 4. Oh, oh, oh. Look at him. He's beautiful in and out of game. He's popping off. Yeah, very impressive stuff so far from the rotations. And he doesn't slow down, right? He can kills bottom, immediately starts running to the mid lane, looking for another pressure play. Misha. Oh, he has got the jump. Should be okay. So Tofu knows that he can't commit Dyer's for this. Bottom tower yeah, bottom attack. lane, tower's taken, and now Ace, he can make his way toward top, go for this top tower as well. I think, he, yeah, he has Vlad's already done with Arcane Boots. And Black Hole's gonna be back available. Solar Guardian is on cooldown, but still, something that OG does have to be careful of. Yeah, OG's gonna really try and find something now. They're smoking up, they've had enough of this. They wanna try and catch gaming gladiators when they're not prepared. He's him the power rune as well. He's got the arcade. There we go. In onto Ace. Ace should be pretty dead here. Nothing to be done to save him. A much needed kill. 
Able to slow down the pressure a little bit here from Gaming Gladiators. They're gonna send the Zeus mid to get some level. Tiger! The Tiger steps up. He's trying to finish off the creep, but he kind of just gets baited in. Tofu was ready in the trees. And uh, yeah, Tiger ready. The heavily committing to try and bring that central down, but it didn't happen. Down bottom, Dracho's getting caught upon by Amar. Ooh, ooh, he needed one more hit. Didn't quite get it. In fact, he's gonna turn towards Boom instead. The Dracho, okay. Ooh, Amar yeah. knew that. He knew that Thunderbird Rap was gonna be coming up, so he didn't have to spend extra time chasing, chasing down Dracho. And that smart heads up play there from Amar, not over committing unnecessarily means that they get both kills out of that play. That was huge. That's a big comeback play for Amar in particular. The Magic Madoff pays off right away. Also, to point out, he is carrying the Ocean Heart. I think it's always something really important to point out in Slardar. Excuse me, I'm coughing for a second. Uh, yeah, it works really. It works with your ultimate. Yeah, it's actually really cool. Just you get that little trail, so that counts as a as a Radiant river Spartan in particular. So extra regen, every little thing counts. Radiant and yeah, they needed this. They really did. And uh, talking to me about this, you're talking about the five cores, talking about the greed. We're gonna have Tiger rushing box. Uh, he's switching it. No okay. way. Okay, I was gonna he say, no queued way. Up. Uh, we saw you, Tiger. Okay, he had it okay. queued up. Yeah. He's done this before, Radiant's his uh, Crimson Guard build. I remember him doing it versus a Visage in particular. Yeah, we this one on some other support trees. Right? Puppy the other day went for a, yeah. a, a Crimson Guard rush. Can work. Can work pretty nicely. You're just like this aura carrier in a way. It's greedy, but that's kind of what their whole draft is about. Gotcha. Yeah, he just had enough of getting baited in and dying. Yeah. He wants to be able to Fortune. survive. Things starting to stabilize a little bit for OG though. The timings, they should have their blink done on the tiny soon. He gets a DD rune as well. Yeah. And after the kills bottom for Amar, Mask of Madness was done and he's also on his way toward a blink dagger too, which will allow them to be able to respond to these aggressive plays a bit better. Diraccio, level 10 with a full Echo Saber. His damage is going to be ridiculous, especially if he is near the Tusk. Dyer's top tower is under attack. One more CS and BZM, he will have blink dagger. There we go. See what they can do with this reveal. Will be a lot easier than for in particular just to kill Boom, right? The t tiny reveal blink dagger with the Zeus Sult in particular, it will just kill the puck from 100 to 0. And Misha, the Tuck is just hanging around here. Misha has come back up. BZM. Oh, Turns down the avalanche and, and the Tofu won't be able to commit for the kill on Misha. He's got the blink. Dyer's oh, tower is under Nicely done there, BZM. Making sure that it, as soon as that blinks out, he's getting a kill with it. Keeping the gold even. Very close on the money hip. Overall, Dracho still at the top. Of course, it is a game. Just stay with the Solar Guardian in play. Always difficult for OG to make moves anywhere outside of the Dawnbreaker because Dracho will always be ready to turn up. And it's very close to having that level two old money. The sprites are with us. Celery. Oh, the little things matter. The raindrop, cloak, fluffy hat. Otherwise, he does die. These little types of extra HP to survive the burst of a tiny. Yeah, he's got the full Grimmer now as well, so oh, that's armed. It's, it's going to be even harder to try for, for that sort of move the next time. And already now a Wraith Pack done for Ace, so could potentially start kicking up the pace here on Gaming Gladiators. And there we go. No surprises there. Three minutes faster than the fastest. That is very quick. Uh, we have had a few games, as you can see, three matches where we've had the Vanguard Viper. Mid tower, OG doesn't really have the best ways to deep push. The Zeus, he only has Lightning Bolt, he doesn't have Arc Lightning. Their other way of deep push is really just Nether Toxin for now, or taking the fight, so they actually bring the numbers instead of just deep pushing. We'll stop it for now. Amar almost blink. Almost the double blink daggers. Finished up now for the side. <laughs> yeah, and at that point, they'll definitely be more ready to, to fight. I'll try and match the, the level that GG are, are bringing at them. It's just, it's scary still because it's this three melee and very limited ways to stop Black Hole, right? They have Lightning Bolt and Tiny in particular to stop it. Misha, can he get away? The ones to tank this gank here. As long as they can keep the rest out of arm's way, they, they won't mind just losing the Zeus, but looks like they will lose Tiger as well. Trees are cut. They're trying to hide, but they instantly clear them out with the Midnight Pulse. Both supports of OG will be found. It's it, it, it just it's so much damage really from Duracho, if especially if he's near the Vlad's aura too. Like an extra amount of damage for this Starbreaker combo. They're actually just gonna threaten the Roshi. All right, I mean, it's all been seen underneath the wards, uh, but I, I think you know even if Gaming Gun is is new, that was there, they would still go for this. They probably don't feel too scared about what OG's gonna bring to them because off to the side, I mean, boom, he's already looking for the setup. Uh, they'll bring Duracho over with the Solar Guardian uh, and on top of BZM. He'll be able to run from this a little bit. Uh, keeping them sort of interested outside and away from the Roshan, and maybe they can look to turn. They jump in. Put the lock down onto Boom, not quite enough. Boom out to the side, but it's been altered up, and Amar's able to catch him down. They take him out. Dragon tries with the TP, but BZN's back in with the blink out. 
Avalon. They might be able to get to the Roach too. I, yeah, now that they've lost the two cores in that sort of affair up top, it does mean this area around the pit becomes rather scary for Gaming Gladiators in this three versus five situation for the next 30 seconds. And Tigers, uh, he's pretty tanky actually versus these Eidolons. They still hurt a bit, but now the Roach is slow. They can I, just take it themselves. And with the lineup that they have, they take it pretty good. They sure do. <laughs> so, so maybe uh, Gaming Gladiators get a bit ahead of themselves. They've seen Gaming Gladiators going for a anyway. He's going to try with a black hole. not pay off there from Gaming Gladiators that time round. They tried to go for Roche at the same time, chasing those kills up top. They didn't get a clean setup onto BZM with Boom and Duracho, and from that point onwards, it was all downhill. There must have been some type of, like, miscommunication going, like, Boom making the aggressive play while his team is Roaching. Like, they just get fully punished, OG. And their lineup, they, they, we were mentioning they have some difficulties, of course, stopping Black Hole, but BZM wasn't even caught, like in the screen, so he was able to just jump in and get the stop instantly. Yeah, OG's gonna be very, very happy with that one. Yeah. Now they have pretty ridiculous timings gonna be coming out. Yuragi almost has Ag yeah, done. Yeah, smiles around it from OG. Their greed now has paid off completely. Radiance middle tower they weathered the storm a bit of that early game, that early pressure of losing the three towers, and now get handed a free Roche for this Bristleback. <laughs> Who now is going to become a very big problem for them to try to bring down. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a, ship that, you know, a much bigger swing than the, the numbers show. You know? yeah. It's just sort of like a 3k gold difference that, that grew out of that. But uh, the, you, you just got to consider the momentum that Gaming Gladiators have that they just let slip away from them. They might lose their ratio again. Yeah, he's got to run. Looks like he will get out in time. But very much that, just a little bit of a difference, putting Gaming Gladiators as a point now where they're struggling to fight. Duraccio has got the Starbreaker immunity to the shot oh, to get away. A tofu is taken down, they're in with the green card. So they can punish OG for this dive, they'll take down a mark. Can they deal with Juragi? Nope, and he just gets a free hundred gold from the Wraith Pact as well. On BZM, he's in. He's going to be able to get the top back onto race, they're going to be able to take down the Enigma as well. <laughs> Uh, he knows how strong he is. Like, look at this. He's just committing even onto high ground as his bristle. While the meanwhile, Tiger's just hitting mid. So they're getting so much out of the map in these last few moments. Radiance yeah, Tiger's top. loving it. Yeah. You know, and with the way that last fight went, he was like, you know what? Push the trap on their back on the menu. First the Crimson Guard. Get, though, the, crimson, you know, he knows. get the box. He's going to be happy. And definitely, it, it is starting to feel like there might be some damage issues on Gaming Gladiators, in particular versus Bristol. Like, they're out shot eggs. BZM, he's just straight at them. In on top of the Duraccio, Duraccio's taken down. You can even look to try and chase them all here with a haste. Boom's got to get out with the illusory orb, but yeah, BZM's ready and waiting. Boom tries to outplay him, but of course, Yuragi and Misha, they're waiting on the back line to deal with him. Avalanche is back up. It really does feel like, the, you know, Gaming Gladiators, they needed to ride that advantage this game. They let it slip away, and you, you, you sort of make that mistake against a team like OG, you're going to get punished very heavily. Yeah, it, I mean, it really is. Like, they had this perfect early game set up, taking the three, all three lanes, pretty much, in a way, and then just getting that split move. That was just too much for them to try to go for with their lineup. They had to just full commit onto one thing. Either the Rose should go for these kills, and yeah, they get punished so heavily now. It's Misha has a fail. He almost has his shard, too. I mean, every, like we said, yeah, they get a massive it's kind of this, like, five-core kind of lineup that OG's gone for and gotten away with it. I mean, Crimson Guard. And Guard also on the Bristol. Like, how do you actually bring him down? Still has Aegis even for another minute, too. So they can just keep sweeping the map. Every time Duraccio shows his face, they run directly at him. That's how you limit that global play. He's just ready to die. He's sort of... He's so far out here to the side. I mean, I'm off. I'm picking up. Misha's getting teleported. The eye lost the black hole for what? Oh, it gets cancelled by the avalanche. <laughs> and I, I'm sure you know you're going to be. Uh, we'll find Tiger in the mid. But indeed, it, 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 you can't help but feel that it's, it's looking rough. It's looking shaky sure from is. Gaming Gladiators. And every one of these... Such a clean start. I mean, as you said, yeah. you know, Gaming Gladiators, they've had some fantastic early game. And, and this game, not an exception. You know, at the, the beginning looks smooth. But then one mistake and OG just are continuing to, to, to just make sure they just don't even get the chance to make another mistake because OG, they're not letting up this lead. No.
And every time that there is one of these like missed ultimates on the side of gaming gladiators, yep. it's massive. As we they mentioned, need them. they are really Radiant's all about those long cooldowns right now. OG, they don't have to rely on anything. They literally are going to be all about this front forward aggression. All they have is Zeus ulti. Like, that's their longest cooldown. Everyone else has no cooldowns. Aegis is going to be going down in 15. Gaming Gladiators might set up for a move as it times out. BGM is going to force them to have to start things now. In five seconds. He's in with the crush. He's not going to let them get anywhere close to Yuragi. Yuragi should be able to step out to the side. Heal up that Aegis regeneration. Can BGM be the new focus? They'll try and go for the timing. As Gaming Gladiators, they get a couple of kills, but they couldn't quite make the move onto to Yuragi in time. And however, in the mid boom, they've got to be a bit careful. He's trying to cut these waves, trying to get any farm. He has Blink. He's a bit safe for now, but. Whew. And Yuragi's just getting completely out of control. 13k net worth. He's unkillable. He really has hit the point of just being immortal. And he has a whole other item coming out as well, too. A BKB done. So now even the coil, even the full combo, he can just walk right through it. Same thing for Amar. Yeah, they've got the two BKBs. Oh, boy. I mean, they, they've just turned this up to 11 here, OG. It very much feels like with these BKBs coming out. They also are they about to look for a fight. They, they're going to be running out of dark Like, BZM's about to have one done, too. And now, boom, he showed himself. Strange. He's dead. He's gone. It's going to be very, very hard for Gaming Gladiators to regain control of this game. Triple BKB is done. So all three cores BKB finished up, and yeah, feels like the damage, especially for the pocket, is now just gone. Boom's game. Celery. He's going to get like two shotted by Bristol. One. My goodness. Yeah, Big damage indeed, Jiragi. 8, 2, and 10. Look at the levels also. As we said, you know, OG, they tend to do this a lot of times with distribution of farm on their three cores. All 18. So, Max Cross, Max Cross, the pace. He's gonna die straight through the BKB. Of course, BKB is not gonna do anything against the Bristol and the Slider. And on to the next one, BZM. He's kind of baiting them here. Go, go, go. Oh, look at on the floor. Oh, Jesus. A bit of inventory management on the fly there. Because he's trying to disassemble, make his BKB in. Oh, I guess he didn't have the slot, so he dropped it me, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Now he's got a moment to fix it up. There we go. Unlock the mining on the axe. they got to unlock the axe now. Okay, yeah, there we go. There we have it. All good. A game, game feels actually impossible to come gaming gladiator. That one point, it really is looking to be one of those games where there was that one moment that you yep. can pinpoint where it just all fell away from, from gaming gladiator. Is now, no, of course, it's just down to the relentless... Now, sort of just going from OG, they knew from that point onwards that with that little bit of a lead, that little bit of a swing, they could just continue to force it. And Gaming Gladiators, since that moment, they've never been able to get anywhere close to, to having the ability to make the same level of moves they could in the early game. They're going to be kicking themselves, really, for splitting up the moves and just not having the Dawnbreaker, not having the puck just playing around that Roche Pit. Going for this top play, it really crippled their entire game. Nice now, Celery. Very likely to just get brought down here from Amar. Oh, he doesn't want to do it. Oh, he's, he's teasing with it. Uh, he's got backup coming in. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. Okay, that was a little awkward. A little bit awkward, but they get the job done. Just the good dude, I am. Yeah, you can feel that Gaming Gliders just like it's in desperation mode. Like, shove out the lanes, grab some creeps, but you can tell that they're like, we don't really know what to do anymore because we can't set up on the cores. They all have BKB, so if we coil them and we go for a solar guardian play, they just pop BKB and turn it. The only things they can really do is kill supports, and yeah. can they even kill them? I mean, Viper, like Tyga. Tyga's tank, he's massive. Plate mail, perseverance, and a crimson guard. I didn't get his bot stream at the end of the day. Uh, good, you know what? <laughs> he's building smart. And he's got a pupil's gift too. So like, all this thing factored in, he's still tanky. He tries to TP out of the trees, but they'll find him. Misha drops down the blind and bolt. Very much feels that like they've just been sort of scattered all over the place here, gaming gladiators. They've lost control of the game. Yeah. Yes, the Bristol point. almost with an AC on top of all the minus armor they already have. Heroes are literally going to start getting two-shotted. With the corrosive haze, with the max stack warpath, he actually might even one-shot the supports. Even though Celery has a solar crest, it, it does feel like he's going to be hitting them for over 500 killed. damage. Yeah. Radiant's middle tower is under Duracio. attack. He shows his face for a second. Yuragi, he's on the hunt. 
Can BKB TP. Or well, BKB spell the Guardian. That also works. Ooh. Amara was almost in rage. Actually, had Blink. Actually, yeah, no. he had to do that as well. His TP was on cooldown still mm -hmm. for 15 seconds, so indeed needed to use the ult to escape. Did take the BKB though. He did use the Starbreaker into it instead, so yeah, does at least have that for the next hit. But doesn't feel like there's going to be a fight, right? It's still, it just, it does not feel like there's a possibility for them to take any fight after all that's happened. Naga, he's taking. See if they can take him down. He's going to have backup coming in. Uh, even if they did kill him, it's, it wouldn't have felt good, and they don't even get to kill him. Tiger's more than fine. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. AC done. And I'm off. Radiant's you see him ready to go there, of course. No fear with the BKB. They're ready to jump and they'll they'll be ready to die. But OG very much on the heroes and, and with items that if they get a kill at the sort of the edge of the base of gaming gladiators, I won't be surprised if we see them diving tier fours. Agreed. I don't they don't even need to though. Look how fast he kills this tower. Three more hits or so. Radiant structures are fortified. We'll have the glyph for a moment, but Duraccio, no BKB for 50 seconds. So even if he steps up, he's just gonna get tossed back. Radiant's Has to be so careful with his positioning. Now, I'm not sure what the what the item that they can wait for is either. That's the problem. It's like Enigma is getting close to BKB, so potentially that could be something. But even then, it's like, do they have the damage to even follow up inside of this black hole anymore? I was actually looking at Tofu. I thought maybe he was farming an Aghanims. But he actually's gone for like this blink, so he can't actually go for anything. I, thought, like, I actually feel like it is just all reliant about like kicking people to tier fours. Yeah, it, at this it, point. it feels like that might Dyer's be the, the play, but as you say, he's not got the items for it. Even if he wants to, it's going to be a long way away. And you can very much feel the, the impending push from OG. They're going to be able to get themselves another round of the road, Jan. Oh, yeah. It's going to be all there. It's airborne online. Amar, he's not only going to have that AC aura coming in from Yuragi, he's also close to having a moonshot on himself. So the bashes are going to be plentiful. And he's got level 20 also, so even more minus armor. That's nice little 24. I mean, wait, what's the maximum minus armor they can put? So with Goo, you can put seven stacks of 20, minus 21, minus 24, minus 45, and then the AC order. So like minus 50 armor or so that they can put onto heroes pretty quickly. And, I mean, and look at Gaming Gladiator's heroes, right? So it's not like these are high armor heroes no. in the first place. They are squishy. Duraccio. Couple hits. He might just be dead. He is. He is gone. seen it so many oh, times from OG. <laughs> just, uh, it, it, this team, you know, they just uh, they always get fantastic masterclasses on how to punish a team that messes up. Right? Yeah. I feel like so many times we've seen squads have a bit of a lead against OG. They make kind of one sort of bad move, and that's it. That's it. You're done for OG. They're